Following the many requests, I've heard you all loud and clear, and they're all saying one thing, show me the money. So today I'll be going through how much structural engineers get paid in both Australia, the US, and the UK. I'll also be going into the outlook of job prospects into the future. Anyway, my name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Before we get into the numbers, I'd like to set a couple of things straight. Firstly, do I think we should get paid more as structural engineers? Yes. Do I think we deserve to get paid more as engineers? Yes. However, some people would argue that engineering is all about serving humanity and not focusing on that paycheck. If I had more money in my pocket, I'm more likely to serve you better and we're more likely to attract the best minds into our field. Not getting paid what we deserve is one of the reasons why we have one of the biggest brain drains in our industry, where people are more likely to move out of the field into an area where they more appreciate their skills. And this is an issue of our own making. Would I say it's fully our fault? Of course it's not. Is it partially your fault? Yes, it is. However, we're always out there chasing those cheaper fees to make sure we're winning those projects. So as fees are coming down, we're expected to be doing a lot more for a lot less. And this race to the bottom has really turned our industry into a commodity than an asset where clients are no longer valuing good engineering, but just the end results to make sure they've got a building that's standing up. When you look at our fees to deliver a project, looking at roughly about half a percent, if that, to design a full building. However, if you look at what real estate agents get, they get 6% of every sale they have. So not only that first sale they get 6%, but every subsequent sale after that. So they're constantly making commissions on each sale beyond that first time. We're only designing that building once for that half percent and we're continually responsible for that building for the full lifetime of it. So we've taken on a lot of responsibility for a very small paycheck. So as engineers, we need to start educating clients about the value of good engineering, why they should be paying more, not constantly lowering our fees, but offering better services so that we can increase them and increase the value of engineering. This is partially the reason I made this YouTube channel. Not only does it help educate people to bring them into the structural engineering field, improving the quality of engineering out there, but also to help educate clients about the value of good engineering. Not only does clicking that like button increase the chances of you getting a pay rise, but it also helps on my channel, helps get it out to more people. Now let's get into the numbers and start by looking about the job prospects in engineering. And again, I want to bring up, do I think we get paid little for what we do? Yes. Is it a good amount of money compared to the average salary? Yes, it is. So when we're looking at the Bureau of Statistics from the US, they've put together what the job prospects are for civil engineers, and they've got it to be growing at about 8% a year. So our prospects for jobs are increasing over time. So there's more and more jobs required in the industry, which is a good thing for long-term job prospects. And as you can see here, also the median wage is roughly about 88,000. So that's average across all engineers of all levels. Let's stick with the US. And this information is coming from SE3, who sent out surveys to its members, asking them how much they're getting paid, how they're feeling from work, some considerations about either why they're staying or moving on. They found that for the first five years, you're earning around $65,000 a year, and the pay slowly increases from there. So if we move into the five to six range, you're earning around 85,000, 11 to 15, now you're up to about 100,000, 16 to 20 is 115,000, 21 to 30, 140,000, then 30 plus, you're sitting above at least 150,000, and it just goes up from there. And of course, this is also broken down by levels of experience, but you can see this up on the board and they follow a similar trend as what level you're in is roughly equal to what level of experience you've got. For the UK, I've actually taken the data from Glassdoor. Now you need to be careful with the data from Glassdoor as it covers all industries all around the world. It doesn't specifically go out and poll its members. So this data can be highly variable. So you need to use it with care. So the data on Glassdoor doesn't actually go all the way down to graduate. It starts at around five to 10 years experience where it starts at about 36,000 pounds. We move up the 10 to 15 year range, we're roughly sitting at about 46,000 pounds, 16 to 20. We're now upwards of 85,000 pounds and over 20 years experience, it's in excess of 85,000 pounds. Now it's quite hard to compare the US figures to the pound figures. It's, it's all about cost of living. So you can just do a direct conversion, but sometimes the cost of living may be higher in different areas. So this can skew the results. For the results for Australia, I've also taken this from Glassdoor. But when I was looking at the results, it looks like the years are somewhat off. So there's something skewy with the results that they've got here. However, they have listed them based on type of experience. So I've made some sort of conversions of what I think they should be. So when you're starting off with a grad, this is around $60,000 a year. Where if you're sitting on five to 10 years experience, so you're moving up into that normal engineering role, so you've gone past your grad position. This is sitting upwards of $80,000 a year, 10 to 15 years where you're possibly moving into your senior engineer role is $115,000 a year. 16 to 20 is roughly about $140,000 a year. 
And then over 20 years, you're in excess of $150,000 a year. Now this is in Australian dollars. The higher end levels is a lot harder to find. So this is why we don't have it on this paper as not many of those senior or director levels are going to be posting how much they're getting paid on a site like Glassdoor. So where do you currently sit in the pay ranges that I've listed above? Please comment below. And I'd just like to give a shout out to one of my newest Patreons, Hassan Malika. Sorry if I butchered your name. Without your support and the support of my other Patreons, these type of episodes would not be possible. As always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.